dive into the Copernicus Marine Service. This is the first out of uh, three online session of the Copernicus Marine event, Marine Data for Africa. So we have participants uh, mainly in Africa, but uh, also all around the world. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the participants. So let me introduce myself. I am uh, Vincent Legros, Event and Marketing Officer at Mercator Ocean International. I will be the moderator of uh, this webinar today. I will be assisted by Lilian Diara, Communication and Outreach Officer at Mercator Ocean International. So my first slide is to remind you that uh, the event will be held in English language, but French language interpretation is available for all the three sessions. So on your Zoom navigation bar, you have the interpretation icon. You just click on it, you just tick on uh, French if you want to follow the webinar in French language. So just Mercator Ocean International in a nutshell, uh, we are a non-profit international organization committed to building a science-based digital ocean. We are internationally renowned for our leading role in ocean reanalysis, monitoring and forecasting. We disseminate ocean knowledge, particularly through the Copernicus Marine Service of the European Union, delivering data, indicators, and ocean state reporting to 36,500 subscribers, out of which 1,500 subscribers are coming from the Africa continent. I just want to share as well some words about our partner, GMES and Africa. So this is a joint support program of the African Union Commission and the European Commission. It is a long-term EU-Africa cooperation on space science and technology to enable the two continents to jointly solve and address global challenges and promote sustainable development under the Copernicus program. GMES and Africa is organized around four consortia in the marine and coastal thematic area of the GMES Africa program. So his main mission is to promote and encourage the uptake and use of the Copernicus Earth observation data in Africa. So I just want to share with you some figures I could collect during the registration. So it is a great success. We have so far uh, more than 860 registration coming from 44 countries in Africa. All the 38 coastal countries in Africa have uh, participants uh, who, were, who were registered to this event. And we have also 10 countries from Asia and Oceania, and three countries from Africa and 16 from Europe, all interested in our portfolio of uh, global marine projects. As well, I, could, I want to share with you the area of interest you could share during the registration. So we could see that 73% of you uh, are interested in the fisheries sector, 66% in the coastal and port management, and 41% in marine safety. Okay, uh, let me share with you the, the strategy of the Copernicus Marine during the 2021. So we start from the fact that almost 50% of the Copernicus Mine users downloaded at least one global product since the beginning of the program. And last year and the year 2021, nine out of 10 of the top 10 Copernicus Mine products are coming from the global portfolio of marine data. That's why we decided in 2021 to present our portfolio of global products in a webinar and workshop a focus on a continent. We began with Asia in May 2021. We continued with America in 2021. And today it is the turn of the Africa continent in end November and December 2021. So let's go to the agenda. We will begin with uh, Veronica Badi, User Acquisition and Market Development Manager at Mercator Ocean. She will make uh, the introduction of the Copernicus Marine Service. We will continue with uh, Cédric Jordan, our user support manager. He will share his screen and uh, do a website demo, particularly the user corner and all you need to access the Copernicus Marine data. 
Then uh, Babette Choneng uh, will do a demonstration of our uh, powerful visualization tool called MyOcean Viewer. Uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, concerning these first three presentations, a dessert coffee break around 9.50, uh, and we set up a small quiz for you to patient uh, the, the webinar to, to be resumed. And after we give the floor to the downstream users with uh, Ken Fujiwara, CEO and founder of Umitran. So uh, he will make his presentation of his company, which is focused on a sustain sustainable aquaculture. Then uh, Mary e. Smith, a senior researcher uh, at CSIR, will do a focus on coastal environment and will present the coral beaching monitoring service. Uh, then we, dis we will display a video we recorded uh, uh, earlier in June, July 2021 of uh, George Wafe, Associate Professor at the University of Ghana. Uh, an interview where he presents briefly his application for fisherman with a focus on maritime safety. Then we set up uh, a Q&A session for the, the users. Then Ergen Fouché, oceanographic engineer at Novelties, our scientific partner, will do the announcements of the training workshop material we developed for this, uh, this webinar and workshop. And a, a last Q&A session to finish. I just remind you uh, the basic rules for the participant to ask questions. On your navigation bar, uh, on the Zoom navigation bar, you have a Q&A chat where you can click on it, ask a question anytime you need to add questions. And uh, uh, we will choose the most relevant question during the Q&A sessions and uh, the, the expert will answer uh, your questions. Uh, just uh, considering the, un the huge number of participants, uh, we might not uh, be able to answer all the questions, but be sure that we will answer all these questions during the two workshop sessions next week or in a post-event summary. Just to, to remind you the timeline, we are on a webinar uh, session today and we set up two workshop sessions next week. Session one, the December 7, uh, with a presentation of uh, uh, our portfolio of global products. And session two will be dedicated more on the practical session material and demonstrations such as uh, the Panoply software, the Jupyter notebook, and QGIS. As I told you, we developed a dedicated material for this workshop. We developed uh, uh, Jupyter Notebooks and GIS tutorials exclusively for you, the participants. Uh, we had the tutorial videos recorded by experts. You can uh, watch some other training video available either on our website or on the, our YouTube channel. We developed as well a user manual with all the links you need to practice. But uh, we will give all these links during the first session of the workshop, the 7th of December, in order for you to practice. And to practice, the online solution is to connect the Copernicus Mind Jupiter Hub. The only requirement you need is to be registered to the Copernicus Marine Service. And I just remind you that the registration is totally free of charge. We set up all this material on a single access point, the Padlet, where you will find all the tutorial videos, uh, the participant manual, etc., etc., on a single access point, and we give you the link uh, at the end of this session, and we will update this Padlet regularly until the first workshop. So. I think I talk a little bit too much, but thank you very much for, uh, for you to be here. I'm very excited uh, uh, with this webinar. I will leave the floor uh, to my colleague, Veronica Badi, and she will do an introduction of the Copernicus Marine Service. Thank you very much and enjoy your workshop. Let's follow the presentation about uh, the Copernicus Marine Service. Like I said, uh, seven years ago, the European Commission launched the Copernicus program. 
the objective of this program is to develop and implement an operational observation program for Europe based on in situ and satellite um, data the interest entities are in charge of uh, the dissemination of the da this data in order to give a free and open access to us observation data you know that to disseminate this ocean data the copernicus marine service managed a network of producers like the observation data provider mon monitoring and forecasting center the Copernicus Marine Service is one of the systematic services implemented by Mercator Ocean International. Mercator Ocean International is a company based in Toulouse with a multinational shareholding, is a non-profit international organization committed to building a science-based digital ocean. We are composed by scientists, ocean forecasters that we are developing a global ocean 3D models and uh, running operational marine forecast. We are more and more international re renowned for our leadership and in our, and operational oceanography and for our key role in ocean reanalysis. To monitor this ocean, we have we, we study uh, variables and these variables are uh, divided in three categories, the blue, the green and the white ocean. The blue ocean monitors the physical state of the ocean. The white ocean monitors sea ice parameter and the green ocean monitor the biochemical parameter. You can find all this information on our website because the key things that you have to, uh, to have in mind uh, for the Copernicus Marine Service is that we have a single access for all the information. It's our website marine.copernicus.eu. With a simple registration, you can access to all access to have access of the free catalog of products. Uh, all our data are scientifically scientifically validated and qualified, and uh, we, we want to harmonize all all these data. So we have the same format, a common format, student CDF format for all our data, and we have as well a user driven approach because we think the evolution of our services is relying of your requirement and your feedback. So don't hesitate, don't hesitate to give your feedback at the end of this meeting too, in this training. Concerning the ocean product, we, the Copernican Marine Service uh, offer a large range of data, uh, come from different source, model data, institute data, and satellite data with different temporal scale, like you can see, real time or forecast with different rate of update. Thanks to this data and this study of the data, the, Copern Marine, uh, the data of the catalog of the Copernicus, Copernicus Marine Service, sorry, fits the need of all the user. We have as well seven geographical coverage that uh, study our the data. After the pro, uh, aside, aside the ocean data and the product, uh, we have an annual publication, the Ocean State Report, uh, that provides a comprehensive and state of the art report on the current state, natural variation, and ongoing changes in the European, European regional seas. So this report is uh, published each, each year. And Sorry, and we have as well an, a summary, uh, which intend to act a reference for, for the scientific community, policymaker, and the general public to better understand the importance and the impact of climate changing ocean and climate change. We can download this, um, this document, the annual report and the summary on our website. Another important uh, variables and uh, indicator is ocean monitoring indicator. There are key variables uh, used to track the vital earth sign of the ocean and changes in line with climate change. These data are free and accessible, available on our, our website and covering the past 25 years. We offer as well a variety of ocean visualization tool 
that allow visitor to at different user level, uh, even if you are beginner or uh, specialized, we can use one of the, these three visualization, visualization tools, Myotion Learn, that allows us to understand more key variables of the ocean, Myotion Light, and Myotion Pro. Babette will present you in detail the true ocean visualization tool. Don't miss our presentation. So uh, at nine, uh, oh, so it's not 9.30 to 9.40, it's uh, more 10.40, yeah. So we have, we are, we, are, we are talking about the data, but now we are talking about the blue market. You know that aside from, aside from ocean products, ocean state reports and OMIs, the Copernicus Marine Service supports all sector of the blue economy. We have defined, 12 blue markets that are grouped by the three pillars of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, that is environment, society, and economy. We can find on our web portal specific content, which gives you an overview of the usefulness of our data for each blue market. After the coffee break, we will present some testimonials from our user and if you are a Copernicus Marine user, don't hesitate to submit through our website your use case. This way, your project using Copernicus Marine data can be alighted on our website and on our social media network. But Lilian will uh, um, present you more in detail the, the, the way to submit your use case after. To finish, we, have, uh, we provide e-learning materials webinars and training workshops like today. Partner, we have a participation to MOOCs, courses, and Akaton. So we have, don't hesitate to, to, to fill out all this information on our website. So I hope you enjoyed this short presentation on the Copernicus Marine Offer and Services. Please get in touch uh, via our social media network to be informed of new event, publication, and product release. You can join our marine community on Twitter. We are around 10,000, so don't hesitate. All the tutorial videos are uh, available on our YouTube channel. And you can also subscribe to our quarterly newsletter to have access to a selection of articles related to the ocean. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vero. It's a, it was a very, very good introduction of the Copernicus Marine Service. So I just remind you that uh, you have a Q&A icon on your Zoom navigation bar. So anytime you need to ask a question to our lecturers, do not hesitate to use this icon and type your question anytime you need to ask a question. Thank you. And now I give the floor to Cédric Jordan, our user support manager at Mercator Ocean International. He will share his screen and present the uh, marine.copernicus.eu, particularly the user corner and all you need to access the data. Thank you, Cédric, the floor is yours. Hello everybody. So I'm Cédric uh, from the Copernicus, um, service, uh, Copernicus Marine Service User Support. So I will give you uh, an overview of the service part of the website. Uh, through the, the the user corner, I can see you. I, I think you can see my uh, my screen and the, the main page of the website. All good. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Vincent. So to reach the the user corner, there is a link on the main page here at the at the, at the top right. And in this uh, in this user corner, you will find uh, several uh, sections. So the first one to visit is the getting started page. So in this one, <clears throat> you will find a sum up of the, uh, the offer and links with, to the products, Ocean Self Report, indicators, and uh, visualization tools. And at the bottom, a path to, uh, to follow to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to become operational with our data and services and to, to handle our data the as best as possible so several uh, sections as well here search visualize download products be informed learn and uh, question is how to contact the user support so 
here you, you will find several uh, video tutorials and links to article through the help center. So it's important to, uh, to, uh, to check this page. Firstly, if you don't know the, the services and the products. So I go back to the user comment. The second section is the help center. This one as well is very important. So I open it. Here in several collection and uh, subsection, you will find more than 100 articles to, uh, to help you to, uh, to, to visualize, to download for general question, scientific question. Everything is uh, available here. For example, if I open the collection, Copernicus data visualization and processing, I can find several sub, uh, subsection. For, and uh, if I want to manipulate Copernicus marine data using Python, for example, I click on the title and this one will come soon. So it's not a good example. Uh, this one, you will find the article with a screenshot or video timetable and any information you, uh, you need about this, uh, this subject. So it's important to, uh, to check uh, this uh, this app center. You can as well uh, search a specific article using a keyword, for example, informed. Here I will find an article to be, how can it be informed automatically on operational events, on products and services. So I will uh, show you later what, what, what kind of services you can encounter. So this uh, this app center is really uh, useful, and uh, so as I told before, there was there is more there are more than one hundred and articles, so a lot of information. Then the user notification service, it's a dedicated page to when we list all the operational events. So for example, improvements, incidents, and maintenance on uh, services and products. So you select the, your uh, category, for example, uh, incidents, because there are incidents sometimes. Here you can filter with different uh, fields, product source, for example, if it's a model, satellite observation, entity observation, the region, the parameter, the type of data, the status of the, 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 the event in progress, the completed, the scheduled uh, anomaly, or you can as well uh, search with a keyword. You can, when your, uh, your uh, filters are, are set, you can, uh, you can register your, uh, your uh, RSS feed and you can be automatically informed of the, um, any, any operational events. So that's why, uh, uh, told you about the, the article here. Well, informed in this one, you will find all the information needed to be informed automatically of any information or any uh, incident or maintenance. <clears throat> Sorry for this, but I come back here. To have more information, you click on the title and you have more information about the events and a link to contact the user support if you have any question or comment. We come back to the user corner. In the user learning services section, all the information available about the trainings, next trainings, future trainings or past trainings. So here you can find information about the, the current uh, webinar. The product catalog, this one is not uh, available, but clicking on this section, you will, uh, you will download uh, the catalog, catalog of products in PDF format. Then e-learning materials. Here, several uh, tutorials, uh, video, uh, Jupyter notebooks. You can sort by level, by subject, by tool or keyword as well. And so there, are, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, materials to, to, uh, to master the, the, the data and the services. 
the product quality well it is is it here so it's this uh, web page is completely dedicated to the quality of the products you can specify you can specify if you want blue green products or white products and you will find different and the area as well and you will find the several uh, <clears throat> tests to uh, to evaluate the quality of the products so i let you discover this page because it's quite a, a huge page in a huge section so don't hesitate to contact us if you have any question i come back to the user corner the product roadmap in this page you will find all the 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 changes, improvements, planned for the future. So, for example, in uh, two weeks, you will be a new Copernicus Marine service release. Information as available here, and information as as well available in the user notification service in the section improvements. There is, a, I can show you. <clears throat> I can show you. Yeah. Come back to this uh, section in improvement. There is here Copernicus new service release on the 14th December. I click on the title. I have information and two documents, the notice of the release here, and all the product impacted impacted by by the release. So you can find the information here and as well in the product roadmap here. In the, the get inspired in this section, but you will you will have more information later with Lilian. You will find a lot of examples of the use of our data for different applications. So I don't I don't say more because you will so have more information later with Lilian. A collaborative forum to discuss with other users or with the user support to register. Because to uh, to download the data, you need to uh, to register. It's important to know that, uh, as Veronique said, the the registration and the use of data is completely free. So you just have to fill in this short form with the first name, last name, email address, the country, the, your kind of organization, the name, and the the website of your organization, and choose your blue market. You can choose three max blue markets then you accept of course the term and condition and the privacy policy and you can create your account you will receive an email to uh, to confirm your email address so you uh, please uh, check your spams because sometimes the, the the mail in this folder and then the activation is automatic and so you will be able to download the, our, our products Uh, FAQ section. So this one is about uh, the concern only the general question. So it's not it's not technical. Uh, it's not about technical issues, but only general uh, question. The service meant, the service commitment and license. It is a document which uh, lists the engagement of the Copernicus Marine Service, the user support, and the user, for example, in, uh, in case of citation, if you uh, use our data, you have, you have to cite our, our source, your source, sorry. So I, everything is listed in this document. And then the last section is the contact section. If I click on this one, I will reach a short form to, uh, to, explain, to explain the support the, the the issue you encounter but you can as well contact us using here at the bottom right the chat so here it's in french because my why my brother is uh, french so you can uh, send us a message you will reach billy or elena or david or myself we are really friendly and uh, so you can uh, don't hesitate to contact us and of course you can as well contact us by email uh, at the address servicedesk.cmms at mercator-ocean.eu. So if I have two minutes, I can show you, uh, Vincent, I can see your uh, your face. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you have but two minutes. You have two minutes, no worries. 
Thank you. So I can show you quickly the, the catalog of products. So I can reach it from the main page here, Ocean Products, or here, Access Data. So I click on Ocean Products. I will reach the catalog of products. So this one is uh, this one is here. It's better. So here you will find all the ocean products available. So more or less two hundred, and they are listed as a, as a card with the title of the product is identifier. The the variable you can find inside, the temporary coverage, the resolution and the assimilation or not. So if I, you can bookmark the product you need here, you can search by uh, area, by a keyword, etc. in this, uh, in the search area, you can download the, the catalog in PDS format and indicators here. So for example, I go to the, the physical uh, for forecast products, the global products. Here, I will reach the, product information page there with uh, several uh, with four different tabs if it's uh, okay just two seconds please or not not okay this one i will see here so this is a product information page so with the title the, the identifier, et cetera, the, 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 global cover, the geographical coverage, the, the description here of the product, the variables, and a lot of information you need about the products. Here in the second tab documentation, you will find two different documents, a product user manual, which is more a technical document, and a quality information document. It's more a scientific document. The services, the, how you can reach this product, which protocol, so WMS, subsetter, FTP, etc. FTP, you uh, subsetter, so you will get the data you need depending the depth, the area, etc. We show you later. And notifications, here you will find the same notification of the the, the user notification service, but concerning this product only. So if I want to access this, uh, this data, I click in the that, but sorry, and the, the uh, button data access access on the top right. I select the data set because on each product you will find several data sets. So I, I select this one. It's the daily data set. Then you will uh, have access to the 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 the. the you can define in fact, uh, your uh, your needs. You can sub region the uh, the area. So, for example, okay. I choose the dates. So I let the, the last date available. So it's a forecast for the 9th of December. Only the service, the surface, but I can choose all the, the depths I want. And the variable. So here I will only choose the temperature. And I click on download. Of course, you can automate, automate your download using Python scripts, etc. So for this, uh, you can contact us directly at your support. So, for example, the process is uh, the, 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 the download is processing. So now it is ready. I can download. The NCDF file will be stored to my, uh, to my computer. And so with, for example, Panoply, it's a freeware. You can have information on the app center. I open the, 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 um, sorry, the file. I've downloaded here. I have metadata information, and here, for example, I want to to to, to plot this uh, the temperature. So I double click on temperature, georeference data, and this is the temperature. 
So it's quite easy. Here, when you select several uh, dates, you can change the date here. You can change the depth here. So it's quite easy. So it's OK for me. So don't hesitate to contact us. As I told you before, using the, the chat or the form or the email address. So it's quite easy. And don't hesitate. Many thanks for your attention. And sorry for the, the two minutes <laughs> late. <laughs> Uh, don't be worried, Cédric. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was uh, uh, indeed very, very comprehensive. So as Cédric told you, you have a very comprehensive uh, user corner and you have a live support as well So to, to follow you uh, assessing the data. So do not hesitate to use all these options. Thank you, Cédric. No, no. Have a nice day. Thank you. I'll leave the floor now to Babette Chonang, our PhD in uh, physical oceanography, and she will make a presentation of uh, our visual visualization tool, sorry, called My Ocean Viewer. Babette, the yes. floor is yours. Yes, thank you. I will just share my screen. Mm -hmm. So do you see my screen? Yeah. We okay. See your screen. Yeah. So hi to everyone. I'm Babette. So I'm a scientist at Mercator Ocean. And today I would like to introduce to you uh, my Ocean Viewer, which is a visualization tool of uh, Copernicus Marine Service. So the tool is accessible through uh, the homepage of uh, Copernicus Marine Service. So when you are there, you just come here and click. So you will be directed in the web page like that. So we have three different types of uh, tools. So the My Ocean Learn, which is for the beginner, someone who, who have to who want to learn about the key variable of ocean. And we have also My Ocean Light which is for someone which is not a beginner or a professional and want to access some key variable of ocean. And uh, we have my Ocean Pro that I will introduce to you today. So we just click here and you will have a window like that. It takes a little bit of time. So you have a window like that, which show you the global ocean with a menu here with uh, different uh, ocean variables. So we have sea surface, we have sea water temperature, and we have also the chlorophyll. So you have also a time scale here uh, through which you can uh, go. So you can change different time by moving like that and the tools will adapt. So we have also here a scale for the depth so this is uh, good for the 3D variable. So for example, temperature or chlorophyll, uh, which uh, can go from surface to the depth of the ocean. So maybe I'm interested for something at uh, 300 meter, my tools will adapt. So when, when I am here, if for example, I want to, I, I am interested in sea water temperature, I can have different, I can maybe, see have some information about that data so here i just click on e and i will have the title the source of the data and the different information on the product i can also download the data from here so by clicking here and this uh, to do this you have to uh, have an account so to have an account cedric just show you how to do so this is available just for someone who have an account. So. Your microphone is off, Babette. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> In my case, I'm not interested about the sea uh, water uh, temperature. I'm interested on another physical uh, variable. Let us say, for example, the sea surface head. So I just come here in different, uh, explore other layer because it is a physical variable. And I have different type of variable here. And I just select sea surface head above Jory. 
So I will have something like that. My tools will adapt again. And I can also deactivate uh, the chlorophyll uh, layer by doing like that. So I have here the sea surface height. So I look at that and I see that it varies from minus two to two meter. For me, it is so big. So I want to change the color bar. So I just come here, I can, I, I, I can change the mean and max. So I want minus one to one and my tools will also adapt. So as you can see here, I want uh, this hide some place on ocean, this menu hide some place so I can hide it like that. And we have the global ocean, the global sea surface hack, and we can see different features, the main currents, Western boundary current, the uh, Gulf Stream here, Kuroshiro, Aguilas current, and we have different um, scale on the ocean. So let us say that I want, I, for example, interested for some variability here in the Gulf of uh, Guinea. So I want to look at one point here, how it varied through time. So I can just come here and click on point and I select, let us say one point here. My tools will show me some plot. So here, uh, let us, okay. So here is the, Okay, no, no, no. I want for the chlor. Let's see. I remove this layer first. Okay, and I click here. You see, uh, the tools will adapt and show me the time series of my sea surface head at this point here. So we can see the variability through time at this point, and this vertical uh, line show the time where I am now. So if I move, you see it will also move. And I can say, okay, I want to download this data. If, if I am happy with what I see here, I want directly to download this point. So you just come here and you can see export to CSV. So I export it. I can open with uh, Excel, or with R, with Python. Uh, so you have uh, your data. So let us see that I'm now interested uh, with a line. So I don't, I don't want the point. I want maybe a line. Let us say I want this line. And I just come here, click on line, and I will still have some time series, the viability of the line through time. So I'm now, I want also to look at uh, another variable, which is not physical variable. Let us say by Joshimi uh, variable. So I just come here and say add layer. I come here and give uh, some key uh, name, uh, let us say biology. So we have here global ocean bi biogeochemistry analysis and forecast data. And I just say add to map. So I want to look at daily field. So we have daily and mean, but I'm interested in daily field. I just come here and click. And I have different type of variable here. In my case, let us say that I'm interested with a, a, a mole concentration of nitrate in the ocean. So I just come here and say, add to map. So, okay, we have the nitrate here. I can hide sea surface head now and just concentrate myself in the uh, ocean uh, nitrate. So here we have it. And uh, I can, uh, okay, so we have some information here on the data, the source of data, where it comes from, which kind of product it is. So I have it like that. And let us say I'm interested with the nitrate, maybe at the surface. So my tools will still adapt and give me the, the nitrate at surface. If I want it, for example, at 100 meter depth, so we have the nitra like that, and we can see that it is highly concentrated in the upwelling region, so Western uh, African coast and also Western South American coast. So this is the nitrate at 100 meter. So I want, for example, to see how it look like uh, here. Uh, I want to see one point here. I'm interested with the data here. So I just come here again and say, let us plot it. 
And here I will have different type of data. So it takes a little bit time. Well, okay. So we have the nitrate concentration here, the time series of nitrate concentration. And we have also a vertical profile of the nitrate concentration at this point. And also here we have the variation of nitrate through time and with the depth. So it is also called the Hoffmuller diagram. And uh, this uh, horizontal line show uh, the depth where I am now with my data. So it is 100 meter depth that I can see here. And this one is the time that I, I, I have here. And this vertical line is plot at this time. So we can see it here. So the, this is the date. Uh, you can have an information here uh, about the date. So I can choose another one, maybe here. And this vertical line, we just adapt, vertical profile with adapt. I can come here. You see, you can move through, through the time. So don't hesitate to plot, to play with the, with the tools. I, can, I want to download maybe this vertical layer. I can still export it as CSV file. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks like uh, the tool. So don't hesitate to play with the tools to share it around you. Let, so let us say that I'm interested with what I have now. So I want uh, the 100 meter uh, depth of uh, nitrate concentration in the ocean. So this uh, plot, I like it. And I want to share it maybe with my supervisor. If I am a student with friends, with colleagues, I can just come here and say share. So I can share it as a link. So I just have to copy the link or share it with uh, people I'm interested for. So I can also share the image. So I just have to just maybe share or download. So when you download, you have some information that the tools give you on the figure. So it says that it is a, a, a plot on this date, uh, this time. And uh, uh, so this is the date and time. And it is a hundred metal depth of uh, nitrate concentration in the sea water. So I can also say I want to uh, download a video. So I just come here on video, but these tools to have the video, you have first to create an account. So I can I, I am able to do it because I have an account and I'm uh, and I am logging uh, on CMM's website. So I can choose my uh, uh, initial date here, my stop date here, and I can give some uh, step. So I want my video to go into one D. So and I can have an hour, week of or month and just here generate the video that I can share. And if also I have a website and I'm interested to have this plot of my website, I can just come here and embed uh, the, 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 the picture on my, of, on my website. So don't hesitate to play with the tools, share it around to you because as African, I know that uh, our great difficulty in Africa is to have uh, access to some data. So just let uh, some people from master PhD knowing that there is free tools to um, uh, uh, quickly see uh, the data or uh, also to have access to free data. So thank you, I will stop here. Thank you, thank you very much, Babette. It was uh, indeed a, a very comprehensive presentation of uh, my ocean viewer. You could see uh, that so you can embed videos, you can share images, it is still free. So please do not hesitate to free register to the Copernicus Marine Service and you can fully use the my ocean viewer. Thank you again, Babette, thank you. So normally we have a coffee break, but uh, considering the one hour late, uh, we will uh, jump to Lilian Diara. Hello, Lilian, how are you? Hello, Vincent. <laughs> I'm good, I'm happy to be back. <laughs> and Thank that you. we could res resume um, this webinar. Um, so I will be covering um, the focus on the use cases. So to show applications of Copernicus marine data, um, products worldwide by different users. So to start off with, um, I will be showing you how to access the 
use our use cases directly from the website. So can everybody, can you see my screen? Yes, good. Um, so, sorry, okay. Uh, so to access the use cases, um, you just, on the, from the main page, you just go to the bottom top menu and there's a uh, field use cases. And here, this is the direct link. Um, and here you have all the use cases, which you can uh, sort out by region, by country, um, by markets. And you can also um, click to see which use cases have mobile applications, which is really interesting. And also which use cases have been funded, who have been funded by um, the Copernicus Marine Uptake Program. So in the markets, uh, you can see for, for the purposes of this webinar, we are interested mostly in extremes, hazards and safety, marine food and coastal services. And here, um, for example, you can find um, the Umatron use case, which will be presented shortly. Um, and so each use case has a brief overview, um, it has a list of the products used and with links, direct links to each product, um, a little um, paragraph on how it's beneficial for users and some useful links. So I invite you all to have a look at the use case page. Um, you also have um, some other options to download um, or read through booklets presenting the use cases by market, by country, or by region. And for those of you using Copernicus Marine Data, um, we invite you to submit a use case, um, which will be featured in the section. Um, and maybe one day you will be invited to present your use case at a training or webinar like this. Um, okay, so this is the use cases. Um, now we're going to have some user testimonies. I'm going to share my screen. Um, we're going to hear um, user testimony, testimonies from three users. So our first up, we have Ken Fu Fujiwara, who is the CEO and founder of Umatron, a Japanese private company specialized in sustainable aquaculture. Um, the company uses Copernicus marine data um, to create a high resolution map view of a range of water quality parameters for fish, shellfish, and seaweed farmers. Um, welcome, Ken. Um, the floor is yours. Um, if you can, I will stop Hi. sharing my screen. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, thank uh, you for introduction. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, you, can, you, you can share your screen, I think. Yeah. Okay, I will share my screen. All right. Thank you. Okay, let me share my uh, presentation. I uh, hope you can see my screen. Uh, is this okay? All good. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, and um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you very much for having this opportunity. So I'd like to uh, talk about Umitron. Um, je vais parler de Umitron. Um, a company dedicated to aquaculture technologies. And before jumping into um, our activities presentation, I'd like to mention that I'm very delighted to have this opportunity since uh, uh, Africa regions are very important in terms of the aquaculture sectors too. So hopefully I can deliver um, uh, useful information to the participants today. So um, this is a short video showing uh, where we usually operate uh, nearby the coastal area in Japan and Asian regions. So we have a lot of uh, aquaculture production nearby the coastal area. A lot of farmers are small to medium sized farmers. So in terms of technology introduction, uh, aquaculture industry is very behind compared to other industry. So there's a lot of challenges uh, in terms of operation and in terms of uh, increasing uh, profitability and also reducing environmental impacts, so on. So what we want to uh, support aquaculture industry to grow sustainably, and we think this is important industry since, uh, uh, as you are aware, uh, the uh, captured, wild captured fish production has been stagnant for 20, 30 years, and marine resources has been all you know, almost coming to the limit, uh, whereas the uh, fish like seafood consumption has been rapidly increasing due to increasing population, increasing middle income households. So we want to support aquaculture industry uh, grow sustainably uh, in the future too. So if we see the a snapshot of the current aquaculture operations, uh, there's a lot of challenges 
in terms of increase the uh, sustainability in the economical way and also in biomental uh, perspective too. So first thing is uh, risk uh, mitigation. So aquafarmers are exposed to a lot of environmental changes to do uh, climate changes as well. So uh, such as the algal blooms or uh, disease management are very important perspective for aqua producers. And on the cost side, uh, of course, from economical perspective, it's very important to increase uh, the production efficiency of the aquaculture. And in that sense, uh, feeding cost, feeding management, and reducing manual operation, reducing capex is becoming very important. And finally, it is really important to communicate with uh, consumers to uh, um, communicate the importance of uh, traceability or the uh, sustainable aquaculture practices through this certificate. So, and also farmers also want to increase sales and trade channels. So first thing we started with is how we can uh, contribute to aqua farmers to reduce environmental uh, risks. And we developed uh, what we call Omichon Pulse, uh, which is a data service for uh, marine aqua farmers. We basically provide uh, Copernicus marine data uh, to aqua farmers and visualize the data so that aqua farmer can easily access using web services and mobile apps. And uh, this is our web service uh, looks like. So we basically provide uh, temperatures, DOs, uh, chlorophyll, salinity, and wave height. And we about to uh, introduce the uh, 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 current and uh, wind, uh, which are all important parameters for aqua producers. And it's also important in, uh, in terms of uh, predicting the environmental changes and prepare for the uh, risk associated with environmental change for farmers. So a couple of uh, feedbacks on pulse uh, from uh, Asia Pacific regions. So one of the oyster farmer in uh, South Australia is using the pulse to, um, uh, to make a decision which farm to harvest. So to get the better quality of oyster, and also a Japanese uh, seabream farmer using pulse uh, to check uh, daily um, ocean water qualities. And prior to uh, this kind of services, they have been using the uh, local sensors, inside sensors, but it's really, sometimes it's very expensive for farmers to purchase. And also it's really challenging to maintain the good quality of their sensor. Uh, requiring a lot of maintenance. So after working on this uh, data, uh, we now working on how we can support increase uh, production efficiency and working on uh, feeding management. Uh, and since uh, it is important for aqua farmers to uh, optimize uh, feeding operation, since it uh, shares 70% uh, of total production cost, and it's also usually requires a lot of uh, labor intensive work. And sometimes it's very uh, dangerous to go to the ocean uh, site when the environment is really bad. And also uh, if we have a um, waste of feed uh, and uh, if, if it goes to the sediment of the uh, ocean, uh, it sometimes causes uh, water quality degradations so it's really important for farmers to uh, manage feeding. And to, for this purpose, uh, we uh, developed uh, our uh, automatic feeder we call uh, Umitron cell. And uh, as you can see uh, on the center, this white uh, box is our automatic feeder and it uses AI technologies and also IoT technologies. So once farmer install, this uh, automatic feeder on their fish pen. They can remotely monitor fish behavior through camera, and also they can remotely uh, operate uh, feeding operations. So what we have been providing with this mutual cell is not just uh, remote feeding features. Uh, we are also integrating environmental factors uh, uh, to optimize feeding, for example, uh, temperature, DO, salinity, lighting condition, ocean colors, uh, parameters uh, 
influencing uh, fish appetite feeding behavior. So we analyzing fish, uh, fish behavior together with the ocean environment so that we have a more uh, optimized feeding. So this is a, a quick uh, example of uh, uh, how the ocean data uh, influencing fish behavior. So on the, on the left hand side, we use this kind of image processing technology to uh, quantify the fish behavior and appetite. And on the right hand side, uh, we compare those data with the ocean parameters. For example, when we have when we experience the rapid uh, temperature change like this, uh, we usually observe lower uh, fish activity, lower uh, fish appetite. And in this kind of environment, uh, it is better to refrain from uh, increased feeding amount and doing a feeding operation so that we don't have a, a waste of feed. And also by reducing waste of feed, uh, we can reduce environmental impact of aquaculture operations. So on our backend system, uh, the um, uh, Copernix uh, products are integrated with our backend system and we provide uh, uh, ocean parameters through the um, Omitron web server uh, as a Omitron pulse and also use those data to do uh, feeding decisions through the automatic feeders. So this is uh, how it looks like on ocean. Uh, we operate multiple automatic feeder together with the environmental analysis of ocean uh, conditions. And operation, operating results has been really good. So uh, this is the example of a red sea bream uh, operation. And in terms of uh, uh, usage of feed, uh, we have been uh, improved uh, feed conversion ratio, which is basically the amount of feed we needed to have uh, one kilograms of uh, weight increase of the fish. And also we were able to accelerate the growth of uh, fish. So we have basically had a uh, yeah, high, you know, like accelerated the growth of uh, fish using uh, less feed. So it's really uh, have a good impact for the aquatic farmers from the cost perspective. And finally, what we are working on is also we are trying to communicate with uh, consumers uh, how it is important to do this kind of uh, uh, sustainable aquaculture practices. And uh, we are taking a bit different way to communicate with uh, consumers. It's really challenging to um, show the data and then educate consumer, but we want to uh, visualize uh, how our, um, how we target uh, uh, and how the future of the aquaculture production looks like. So we make the, um, our original, uh, the uh, seafood brand and using this kind of key visuals uh, on the center, there is a fish pen and we have growing fish and on the, uh, you know, like around that kind of fish pen, we also have a, a natural ecosystem in the ocean. And we want to keep this kind of a ocean environment at the same time, providing sustainable seafood to the consumers. So uh, using this kind of key visuals, uh, uh, collaborating with the uh, supermarket chain and in Tokyo urban area, we providing uh, our seafood to the consumers uh, outgrown by our uh, technology and return cell. And uh, result has been very really great. Uh, we have successfully delivered uh, 1 million meals during this year. So, and the consumers are becoming more keen on the uh, consumption of sustainable seafood. So it's really good uh, timing for us to provide this kind of uh, seafood to the consumers. So in, in summary, we have been trying to use a lot of ocean data in aquaculture practices in, in different ways, starting with risk mitigation and the feeding operations and the value to the consumers. Uh, there's like direct contribution of the ocean data and also indirect uh, contribution of the ocean data, like the value to the consumer. But in general, the um, ocean, ocean data like Copernic's uh, marine data are very important data set for aquaculture production. And uh, we are seeing more opportunity to integrate those data set with the actual operation of the aqua farmers. 
So finally, uh, this is email, my email address, and we are seeking out all collaboration opportunities. So if you have uh, questions or any, you know, like uh, things to say to me, please reach out to me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ken, um, for that very um, interesting um, presentation on a very innovative use of uh, Copernicus marine data to support aquaculture and especially given given um, your private sector view, that's very important and it could be adapted to an African use case. Um, please stay with us for the, um, the Q&A uh, session, which we will have after our last testimony. Um, so if, you, if I invite all the participants to um, type in their questions, um, if you have any questions for Ken now, you can, do, you can write it in the discussion. Um, okay, let's move on to our next user testimony. Right. Um, thank you, Ken. <laughs> Um, so our next user testimony will be from Marie Smith, who is a senior researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in South Africa. So Marie will be presenting the Western Indian Ocean Coral Bleaching Monitoring Service, which is co-designed by the Council and also by other experts. Um, so the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is actually um, the leader of the Marco South Consortium, one of the four GMS in Africa consortia focusing on the Southern African region. And, and they have developed a number of projects using Copernicus uh, marine data. So welcome, Marie. Um, I think you should be able to, yeah, you're sharing your screen. Um, can you hear me? Are you there? <laughs> I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Okay, um, good. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, so I will carry on. Good morning, colleagues, or good afternoon, or good evening, where you are in the world. Uh, so I would like to showcase one of the services that we developed as part of the Marine and Coastal Operations for Southern Africa project, uh, and that is the Coral Bleaching Service. So just a little bit of background. Uh, Marco South represents one of the four consortia in the marine and coastal thematic area of the GMS in Africa program. And GMS in Africa is a mechanism for the uptake and use of Copernicus Earth observation data in Africa. Uh, the Marco South consortium covers the southern and eastern African regions from Angola all the way around to Kenya and includes a variety of partner organizations which are listed on the left hand side of the image there. As part of the Marco South Consortium, we were responsible for providing data and infrastructure, training and communication, and raising awareness of Earth observation activities in our region. Uh, we also developed Earth observation-based services with six different applications across three different domains. Today, I will specifically focus on the Coral Bleaching Monitoring Service, which was co-developed by the CSRR as the technical and earth observation experts uh, alongside our partners Cordio East Africa which were the domain experts. Uh, now why is coral bleaching important and why does it matter? Uh, coral bleaching is the most pervasive threat to coral reefs and can result in uh, cascading impacts to food security and ecosystem services that are derived from these natural resources. Uh, bleaching occurs when corals are stressed by sudden changes in their environment, uh, which cause them to expel their symbiotic algae called zooanthellae. And this results in a loss of the vibrant colors that we're so familiar with uh, in terms of coral reefs. Uh, some of the factors that might cause bleaching include incre uh, increased nutrient loads or changes in the light environment under the water. Uh, but the most common cause is warming water temperatures. So as the domain experts and region or domain and regional experts, Cordio have been providing coral bleaching alerts um, since 2009. Uh, and this includes a GIS dashboard of up-to-date in situ bleaching observations from 2016 to present. Uh, and they also send out bi-weekly regionalized environmental synopses and bleaching outlooks during the peak, uh, peak bleaching season, which is usually between January and June every year. In terms of earth observation based coral bleaching, uh, this type of monitoring usually makes use of sea surface temperature and sea surface temperature derived products. 
So historically, Cordia have made use of NOAA's Coral Reef Watch satellite products, uh, who have provided the gold standard for global Earth observation-based information on coral beach monitoring for more than 20 years. Uh, however, we have found that these products generally tended to overestimate the thermal stress and the alerts for the Western Indian Ocean region. Uh, so this is why we ended up developing the Western Indian Ocean Coral Bleaching Monitoring Service. Uh, because uh, although it uses the same methodologies as NOAA, uh, first of all, it is entirely based on Copernicus data, uh, specifically using the UK Met Office's OSTEA or Operational Sea Surface Temperature and Sea Ice Analysis product, uh, which we obtained from the CMEMS website. Uh, so the products that we provide are regionally tuned to the Western Indian Ocean by using more recent and warmer data in the climatologies um, to create our products. And this results in fewer overestimations uh, or alerts of the thermal stress. Uh, the service consists of a interactive web-based product viewer uh, with clickable information. So any of the areas on the images that, you, that are colored uh, if you click on any of the pixels, it'll show you the actual value of that information. Uh, there are also five different products provided at a five kilometer spatial resolution um, with a date selector and scrolling functionality to move through the different days. The service also has a daily product um, archive all the way back to January 2007, and all the products are updated daily at one day latency. Uh, furthermore, we also provide a selection of virtual stations, which can be selected from a drop down menu. You can see all the locations on the left hand side of the image. Uh, and that shows you the historical daily temperature statistics per location over the past 12 months. Uh, you can also select different date ranges, but 12 months is the, is the longest period that you can that you display visually. Uh, if you would like to know more information, you can find us under the Copernicus Marine Services use cases. Uh, at the moment, we are, we are number two. <laughs> I think we were added fairly recently. Uh, you can also find information about, uh, at this use case, you can find information of where to find those, the, the web tool, um, as well as more information on Cordio East Africa and their tools and products that they provide, as well as the GMS in Africa program. Thank you very much. Hello. Sorry, I was trying to find my mic. <laughs> Thank you, Mary, for your for taking the time to present. And um, it's a very uh, coral bleaching. Bleaching is a very big problem at the moment, and you the use case offers a very good way to monitor. Um, the health of corals. Thank you. Um, please, could you stay on um, uh, for the for the Q and A? And now we're going to have um, our last speaker. Well, our last uh, use case presentation by uh, George Wiafe from a professor at the University of Ghana, um, which is leading the GMS in Africa Consortium for Western Africa. Um, the the University of Ghana has developed a service. Um, to provide information to fishermen about their safety at sea by sending SMS alerts on forecasts of ocean conditions. So um, unfortunately, he is unable to join us today, but we have a pre-recorded video. Um, if I can just, uh, if, which I'll share with you. Um, so this video was, was actually um, um, prepared uh, for uh, the expert team on op operational ocean forecasting systems. And in this video, Professor Wiafe shares his experience on using Copernicus marine data and also on the importance of having access to ocean monitoring and forecasting data. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, oh yes, sorry, I forgot to activate the sound. So hold on, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to try again. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay, this time around, it should be okay. And... Hi, hello. 
Hello, thank you very much. Uh, my name is George Wiafe. I am a professor of oceanography at the University of Ghana. And currently also I'm the director of the Regional Marine Center at the University of Ghana, uh, which is implementing the GMES in Africa program. And uh, my responsibility is to coordinate this program in West Africa in terms of the coastal and marine resources management. And then finally, I'm also a founder of a startup which is promoting open source uh, technology innovations, especially with the youth and also women. So that is a whole lot of things I do at the moment. Yeah, we are using the Copernicus suite of data, which we assess via our unit cast systems operationally. And then for us, we add value to forecast ocean conditions, especially for the fishermen. In Ghana, for example, we have about 12,000 fishing canoes or the dugout boats. And these 12,000 people have about 25 people on the average and they go to see where they have no communication system. So what we do is that we do three day forecast for them and then send them via SMS messages or via Android and iOS app. So what they do is that they receive for the three days in advance, one, two, three, just numbers. When it is three, it tells you that the ocean is going to be very rough. When it is one, it tells you that it's going to be calm. And then two is in between these two, uh, events. And we do that for the fishermen along the entire coast of West Africa. And then we go forth also to train them to plant flags. So they are colors green, red, and yellow. So sometimes the chief fishermen will receive this information and then we'll send somebody to go and plant the red flag at the landing site. In Ghana, we have over 300 landing sites for the canoes. So if you multiply by the 12 coastal states of ECOWAS, that is a whole lot of people whose life could be endangered if they don't have access to early warning systems. And as well as using the Copernicus data in terms of uh, fighting against illegal fishing, and then also looking at land uh, usage, land classification, ecosystem changes. So for us in West Africa, the GMES program is very, uh, critical to uh, coastal development. And we've had very, very huge successes with the fishing communities, especially. So uh, uh, operational ocean forecasting is something that is very pertinent to the region. Well, you know, fundamentally, the, we say the oceans do not respect any boundaries or borders. So it's transboundary. And look at the extent of the ocean, uh, two thirds of the ocean covering the earth. And if we don't have a global network of system in place, we are managing a portion of the ocean space. What happens to the other portion that we will not understand that we have people there, that safety and security is a concern. Again, my pollution, from my region who end up with the current at somebody's place. So the only solution is to have a network of system, which is global. It cannot be local, it cannot be regional. It must be global. And again, this is where we must have the balance of forces. The stronger must support the weaker to have an ocean space which is globally managed. Because the benefit is <laughs> for the whole world. And a global ocean observing uh, forecasting system, it's, it's pertinent to the Earth's survival. Well, I think we're going to stop there because he speaks more about the um, a tooth system. Um, so I think now we're going to go to our um, Q&A session. Um, Vincent, do you want to take over? Yes, yeah. 
So thank you for the three user testimonies, and thank you. It's uh, it's it was a very good example of what we can do with uh, Copernicus Marine Data. So I will ask uh, all the lecturers just uh, to to be aware that the Q and A uh, session uh, is beginning, and we will certainly need your help. Uh, first, before uh, beginning the Q and A, I would like to say to all the participants that. Uh, an attendance certificate will be edited for all the participants of the webinar and all the participants of the workshop. Considering the technical problem we had at the beginning of this webinar, we will edit uh, very quickly uh, the video recording of this webinar and send it to all the 865 registrants of this webinar. Like that, you will have uh, quickly uh, a replay of this webinar. And all the presentation uh, will be, uh, with the consent of the lecturers, of course, will be shared between the participants as well. OK, so let's begin with the first question. So uh, Maliha Malek, we, who is from Bangladesh, hope I can use the Copernicus data for my region after this course. So I guess uh, even myself, I can answer this question even if I'm not very scientific. So actually, uh, we are talking about uh, the global portfolio of marine products. Uh, this uh, global marine data are available for uh, so, um, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, and Pacific Ocean. So of course, uh, Bangladesh should be in the Indian Ocean. The portfolio of global data is dedicated for your region. Thank you. So the second question for Ari Kopani, sorry for the pronunciation. So if uh, there is a Southern Ocean uh, slash Antarctica tab on this Blue Ocean service, uh, who can answer that between the lecturers? Mm -hmm. Cedric or maybe Paz? The problem is that I don't remember exactly when this question popped up. I think it was linked to the ocean indicators, maybe, uh, but I, I'm not sure. So I, I, I don't know uh, what, what to answer to, to this question. OK, so maybe, Harry, if you can give on a private chat some, uh, some more information to Paz, and I'm sure she will be able to answer. Or Cedric, you want to say something? Yeah, sorry, I had uh, some problem and I, I didn't understand the, the, the last, the, the end of the question. So, me too, I don't understand so much, but if there is Southern Ocean slash Antarctica tab on this Blue Ocean service. So, Ari, I guess I invite you to give some more details to Cedric and, and Paz, and I'm sure they will be able to help you. Huh? Yes, please, in the private, uh, as a private question. Um, can I try and answer maybe? Um, if you go to the main uh, web, um, to the main homepage and you look at the products, uh, you can actually filter products by um, regional domain. And one of the domains are the Antarctic Ocean. So I think that might answer your question. Yes, you can. You can have the product, ocean product. You can have. Uh, you can have uh, indicators. So, so as uh, Fabrice, Fabrice, I just posted uh, a comment on OMI, ocean monitoring indicators, in the discussion. So, there is a link. So you can follow this link to have uh, <clears throat> all the, the indicators of, over Antarctic. Thank you, thank you, Cedric. So yeah, we succeed in uh, answering the question. So that's great. So let's go to another question. So um, most Python codes in user learning services use base map to visualize spatial maps. Base map has some technical issues. Scientists are moving to Cartopy. Do you perhaps have Cartopy codes or you will update the, the codes as time goes by? Cartopy has nice features as compared to basemat plots. 
maybe it's um, a, yeah pause thank you but yes the, the user is right completely right and the thing is that in the material we have showed we have also legacy material from 2000 i don't know 18 or 16 even so for this material we were using base map but little by little for the latest one we are moving to to cart to and also to other libraries like project express and, and so on and indeed Fabrice uh, replied and for example for this uh, training the the one for uh, the africa region uh, everything relies on cartopy no not base map anymore hmm. Thank you very much, Paz. Thank you. Uh, so I can jump to another question from Aristomenes Amadeu de Nascimento. Boatard, Aristomenes. So are some possibility of Copernicus furnished and run model marine regional for Guinea Gulf? So for me, if I understood well, maybe Cedric or Paz can answer this question, but this is the same question I had at the beginning. So we are talking about uh, global products. So this port for you is, is working for the, the Gulf of Guinea, no? Yes? Yes, it's working. I guess uh, you can zoom, like Cedric show in his presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are interested about some region, you can just put uh, the coordinate uh, and you will have data on that region. Thank you, Babette. Cédric, you want to add something? Uh, no, it's okay. Thank you, Babette. <laughs> Thank you, Cédric. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, another question now from Evi Adrigenti Sudjono. Sorry for the pronunciation. So, very impressive presentation, Cédric. Thank you, Cedric. I wanted to know about the resolution of data and the error of the model. Please explain it. Yes, so I've answered uh, in private uh, message as well, but the resolution is available in the product information page. So I can show you the, <clears throat> on the directly on the website if you want. So please, Roman, would you stop sharing your screen? I can, I can overlap, I can. Up. It's all good. Yes, just a minute. I need to remove this one. So the resolution is available here. If you speak, if you speak about this product, the product I uh, I presented in live. So the resolution, the special resolution, is here in the card of, and if you click. To reach the product information page, you can find this information here, spatial resolution here. So it's one, one twelfth of degree, and it is in in uh, it's for each point of grid we have this re spatial resolution. About the error, you can find this information in the documentation of the product. So you click on the tab documentation, and so. There are two uh, documents, the product user manual and the quality information document. This information will be in this one. OK, so don't hesitate to check this product. It's, it's uh, this, uh, sorry, this document. Thank, Thank you, me. Cedric. Thank you very much. Uh, please, Roman, would you share your screen again for the Q&A? Perfect. Okay, so this is a question for uh, for Babette. So, yes, of course, can we select an area uh, concerning the visualization tool? Yes, so I can just share my screen. Ah, to share my screen, you have maybe to remove uh, some. One second, Roman, please. Roman, would you stop sharing your screen? <clears throat> okay, Babette, you okay, should be able to share your screen now. Yes. So yes, we can select uh, an area using uh, on using the tools. You just come here in area and click. So I say, okay, I want to select maybe this area here. Okay. 
So and when I'm okay with that, I can just click on it. So this is what you will have. So when you are okay with your area, you click on escape and you will have this, uh, the plot of this data and you can still download the data coming here. So you just come here and say export sample to CSV. So if you are interested with this area, so we can- and You can even zoom it, no? Yes, you can zoom even in your, in the area where you're interested for. So here, for example, I have, uh, yes. You can zoom whenever you want. So yes, we can have some area using the tools. Perfect. And you are very near the Gulf of Guinea. So yes. Almost, <laughs> almost targeted. <laughs> yes. Good. Thank you, Babette. Thank you for the clarification. So please, Roman, if you don't mind to share your screen again for the Q&A. OK. So another question say, as there are few observations close to the African coasts, is it possible to use Mercator reanalysis products for studies in the coastal zone? So we want to answer this question. Yes, Cedric again. <laughs> yeah. So it's yes, it's a it's a scientific uh, question. So we for us it's a level two question. So we have to contact the the expert of this product. So I I, su I suggest you to uh, to send uh, an email or to contact us uh, us through the the contact us form of the chat. So we will contact the the right people and we'll answer you uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, and someone will put uh, to the chat box the the email straight away to the user service, and you can ask this question. So maybe the same for Matthew Silas, uh, if he can use the scripts to download data from this site. Uh, what do you think, Cedric? I should recommend exactly the same to write straight away to uh, service desk at mercator.eu. Yes, I will uh, post again the, the, the email address in the in the discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cédric. Another question uh, from Iman uh, Maher Abdullah. Uh, thank you all for your great efforts and valuable presentation. I would like to ask about the resolution of data, tidal waves, calculations, erosion parameters, the modeling forecasting scenarios. Thank you. It's a vast question, Iman. Cédric or Paz? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can answer also. Mm -hmm. yes, so about the data resolution, like we show uh, you have, by clicking on information, you have all the information about the data you want to use. You have one over 12 degree of resolution for the global. You also have uh, the regional data. So just go on the website uh, and click on the data that you're interested for, and you will have several information. Uh, yeah, included the resolution. Thank you, Babette. Cedric, anything else to add? No, it's okay. Thank you, Babette. Perfect. Thank you, Babette. So let's pass to another question uh, from Stephen Moore. And it's a question for Ken. So does the cell come with cameras? How do you maintain it? Uh, sure. So yes, uh, it's actually come with cameras. And we use uh, a solar panel to supply power and use um, cell phone network to acquire your data uh, from internet. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. There is a question from David Joseph Alieu. So thanks and appreciate the organizers of this session. But uh, would like to know uh, what is the next plan moving in terms of engaging, enga engaging sorry, civil society organization in the West Africa region? Maybe Lillian, can you answer this question? Yes. Uh, can I share my screen, please, Roman? Um, okay, so for use case, uh, already we have some use cases um, dealing with um, um, from civil society. So it would be on um, when you go to the use case page, you'd have to click on education, public health, and recreation. 
and there you have some use cases engaging civil society. And to take this forward, um, next year we will be um, there will be a, a new person who will be actually developing use cases in um, Africa for the Copernicus Marine Service, and one of the um, markets will be the um, will having will, will be having use cases developed by the civil society. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you. So the next question, if I remember well, it is on, uh, it is for Babette maybe. Yeah. Can my ocean viewer can be used for Lake Victoria in Africa? Good question. Yeah, so I guess no, because there is no uh, data available on Victoria Lake uh, when I see the data on Copernicus. So my ocean viewer is, good for to see the data so if you zoom in africa uh, in that lake there is no available data I guess mm. until now. The, this is path i would suggest uh, because uh, as we are in the uh, uh, marine component of the copernicus uh, service uh, i would suggest this user to also explore the uh, copernicus land uh, because it's focused on the land features so maybe in there uh, he can um, um, find more information about lakes, for example. Okay. Okay. And uh, for uh, Johnson Kim Balama, do not hesitate again to use our user support. We have a live section where you can write direct, directly uh, them an email and even a chat box uh, uh, in the website. And they are very efficient and they can answer within uh, less than one, than one day to your questions. Okay. Next question uh, from Zakaria Kamis. I am wondering how can I use Copernicus Mind Service products to model wave system? So, Babette or Cedric or Paz. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure to understand. Uh... In the catalog, you will find uh, uh, wave products. So I, yeah, I don't know if it's the question or not. For example, there is the, the identifier is 001027 is the uh, forecast wave uh, model. So so there are uh, wave information in the catalog, but I'm not sure that it is the question. Yeah, I, th mm. I think this is the question. No, maybe Paz, do you want to add something? No, either is is that one is the question, or maybe this person has uh, his own web model and they want to to run it, uh, maybe with the with a certain boundaries condition, and they can of course use uh, uh, the the web products for uh, for that the Copernicus Marine Services. Uh, uh, providing for doing for setting this uh, boundary condition, of course, and also uh, this person can use the in situ wave data for validation also. So yes, I, I guess we it goes it goes this this way is the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I invite you, Zakaria, to, to go to our uh, catalog of products and try to investigate a little bit, and do not hesitate that the user support is here to help you. So uh, question, a question from uh, Sofian, Sofian Asni. As a PhD student in bioinformatics specific to fisheries, I studied the impact of environmental factors on the small pelagic fishes. I use a lot of Copernicus Marine Service as a source of environmental data. But I want to know if there is a, a RCP scenarios of future parameters in this platform. Technical question. Who can answer that? I I, I don't know what uh, this person means with RCP. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's a problem for me, for example, for providing. I think RCP uh, is what the IPCC uses for the climate predictions, and mm -hmm. therefore I don't think that uh, these are taken into account in the uh, in the catalog products. Thank but you, I'm not sure if so that was the question. Maybe, Sufian, uh, if you are still in the attendance, do not hesitate to try to clarify your question. So let's go to another question. So 
this this will be the four last question of the q a and we will do the material announcements after afterwards so i am asking about the ocean wave intensity data and its resolution around small island like zanzibar yes i i answered this question already through the chat yeah. and uh, what i suggested is to to as, as we did before to go to the catalog and filter mm -hmm. by wave pa parameter and in there uh, this person will find several products that are providing this information and for uh, for each product uh, this person will be able to find the, the resolution so we already explained it and okay. i guess this person will will know thank you thank you Paz. so a question from the the, the same participant so I don't know if you can answer that, Ken. Maybe it's a secret. Can you please tell about the technology behind the Umitron? Uh, <laughs> so yes, so the, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, components, but if I talk about a bit more about uh, Copernicus Marine Data, so mm -hmm. I think a great thing about uh, Copernicus Marine Data has the uh, longer historical data with the consistent uh, quality. Because uh, if we want to use like just the local sensor data, sometimes the you know data quality is not good, and it's really hard to compare one to one. But since uh, the quality of the Copernic data is maintained, it's a really a good you know tool to compare with the you know one regional ocean to other regional oceans, and that kind of uh, consistent historical data can be also used to the uh, spatial planning for the aquaculture to assess like potential area for the aquaculture. So I think uh, kind of longer term historical data and consistent quality is a good part of the uh, Copernic spine data. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, for the clarification. And thank you to put forward the Copernicus marine data. So uh, next question. Um, could we use Copernicus for wetlands in Tunisia? I will say that the answer is very similar to the lake yeah, of uh, Victoria. So. Either, either if, if the if the wetland is very close to the to the coast, uh, uh, maybe we uh, the the Copernicus Marine Service is able to to resolve this area and provide data in in there. And if it is not close enough to the coast, uh, this person has to better go to the um, uh, Copernicus Land uh, Service. Okay, thank you, thank you, Paz. So, um, question from Hassan Esekir. So, can we use uh, Mercator Ocean data, so Copernicus Marine data, for the Ecopath Trophic model? Yes, the same for the question before. That the, uh, 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 question, yes, it's difficult to answer because it's a scientific issue, and so we need to contact experts. And but the the expert will be available next week. For the second uh, session on uh, i think it's on on the 7th of december so this kind of question can be and can be asked to this expert so i suggest you to uh to wait one week <laughs> or to contact the user support thank you thank you cedric and uh, i will leave uh, the next question to you as well uh, cedric so desire please contact directly the, the user support. We will put the, the email on the, on the chat box and they will, be answer, uh, they will be able to answer your question and to clarify all your blocking points. Yes. So thank you. Thank you for the participant. It was uh, uh, quite good the Q&A session. So now it's time um, for Ergan Fouché. Uh, our oceanographic engineer from Noveltis, our scientific partner, to make a presentation of the material uh, for uh, the next week workshop. Ergan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So my name is Ergan Fouché. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm working at Noveltis as an ocean engineer, and I'm going to present you the content of the workshop that we have prepared uh, next week. So the workshop takes place on December 7 and 8 
and it's entitled uh, Let's Go Further with the Copernicus Marine Data. Um, so here's uh, about the content of the first session on December 7. You'll have an introduction of the global product from the Copernicus Marine Service. So uh, data experts and data producers will come talk to you about the in-situ and satellite observation products, as well as the model products. So you will learn about um, how the products are constructed, what they contain. Also, you will learn about uh, what you can do with the, these products, and you will be able to ask all the, um, the practical questions that you've asked here the data experts will be able to answer your questions. So that's for the first day of the, the first session of the workshop. Um, and so on December 8, uh, we'll have the second session, uh, which is a demo session with practical exercises dedicated to Africa. So we'll be using uh, Jupyter Notebooks, so Python, as well as uh, GIS tools with QGIS. Uh, the exercises we're proposing are dedicated to beginners. So even if you don't know how to use Python and QGIS, uh, it's totally okay. We're going to start from scratch. And so you'll be able to follow the exercises even if, you, if you're a beginner. So on the next slides, I'm going to present you the, the content of each, each exercise that we have prepared. And I really hope you'll be interested in these subjects. So the first exercise, um, the first Jupyter notebook is an introduction in which you will learn how to download the products uh, from the Copernicus Marine Service directly with uh, Python. Um, as it has been presented before, the products you download, they are NetCDF files. And so you will learn about the NetCDF file structure. And you will also learn how to explore such files with Python. So uh, here is a screenshot of a Jupyter Notebook. Um, you can see that you have text that describes um, how the, well, that describes the exercise. And you also have the, the code, so Python cells here that you can run. And this is how the exercises will work. So this is the first Jupyter Notebook. And, uh, uh, it will be very helpful for you uh, if you want to dive into the other exercises. So the second Jupyter Notebook is um, the first real exercise, and it will talk about upwellings events in Northwest Africa. So you will learn everything about this phenomenon. Uh, very quickly, uh, upwellings happen, or well, they originate from the winds, and so the aim of this exercise is to see how from the winds um, prediction from the Copernicus Marine Service products, or how you can predict the fish concentrations. And you will understand why uh, in the regions with upwelling events, you have very intense fishing activities. So this is the topic of the second Jupyter notebook. And here are some of the plot that uh, we are going to make. So I confirm uh, that we're going to use Cartopy because we don't use base map anymore. So here you'll have the um, maps of the winds, for example, time series, and uh, also other figures. The aim will be to see how the parameters are correlated. So the wind, the surface temperature, the surface nitrate, the surface chlorophyll, and also what happens in the depth. Um, so I don't want to spoil uh, too much the notebook and I really hope you will attend the, this exercise. The third Jupyter notebook will be about the Congo River discharge in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so the water coming from the land, um, well, it's fresh water and it also carries uh, lots of nutrients and also sometimes pollution. And all these products, when they reach the ocean, well, we're able to see, uh, well, they affect the, um, the ocean parameters. And we are able to see these uh, changes in the parameters from the Copernicus Marine Service products. So this is what this exercise is dedicated to. Again, here are some of the plots that we will make. <clears throat> here, this will be an animation of the salinity because 
when the fresh water from the Congo River reaches the ocean, well, the salinity decreases, and we can observe this from salinity products. And we will also see how the Congo River affects other parameters, such as temperature and chlorophyll, um, and also a lot of diverse diagnosis to monitor the Congo River discharge. So this is very interesting, especially if you're interested in coastal environment. The fourth notebook um, talks about cyclones and especially about the LOE cyclone that happened in early January 2021 around Madagascar. And so in this notebook, we will learn um, uh, to see from the Copernicus marine products how the cyclone affects the parameters, so the wind, the surface temperature, and the waves. So again, here are some of the plots we will make. So we will plot the wind along with the location of the cyclone to see how the cyclone has affected winds, uh, waves also, and here is for the temperature. So you will learn about um, well the effects on, of the cyclones <clears throat> thanks to this notebook. The last Jupyter notebook has been developed by PASS. Um, and it talks with uh, it talks about uh, in situ observation products. Um, in this notebook, you will learn how to subset, analyze, and download in situ products. And you will also learn how to plot very beautiful 3D plots like these ones. So if you're interested in in situ observation products, or if you want to plot such beautiful plots, then you you have to attend this event. So this was for Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, we've also prepared um, QGIS trainings. So the first one is about uh, the Agulhas current in South Africa. So this exercise is about marine safety and you will learn how um, you can draw a ship route from one port here to another, uh, avoiding the most dangerous sea conditions. So taking into account um, the currents and the waves. So here is one of the plots that you'll be able to produce um, after you've attended the, the workshop. And our very last exercise, uh, another QGIS training, is about the marine heat waves in the Red Sea. Um, and so here is one of the plots you make uh, with this exercise. It's the anomaly of the sea surface temperature. And so uh, this ex exercise has been reproduced from a real scientific study using the Copernicus marine products. Uh, and the objective of this study was to locate the corals that were the most, the most affected by the heat waves. Because as Mary said before, um, the coral bleaching uh, originates mostly from the changes in temperature. And so this is one of the applications that you'll be able to make from, from this exercise. So this is the end of my presentation. Um, I hope you'll be interested in the subject that we have prepared for you. And I really hope uh, I'll be seeing you on the, on the workshop next week. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Uh, so indeed, uh, Novelty's uh, our uh, scientific partner, uh, develop uh, material dedicated to this workshop. So please, to all the participants, be there for the next week workshop, and uh, and practice uh, all the Jupyter notebooks uh, Ergan and our team developed for you. Um, there is no more questions, so I invite uh, all the panelists, please, to, to put their camera on, and we will make the conclusion uh, of this webinar. So once again, on behalf of all my team, I would like to apologize deeply for uh, the technical issue we had at the beginning of the workshop, of the webinar, sorry. Uh, it was unexpected, but I hope uh, we did uh, everything to put everything back on track. So I would like to thank all the panelists for their patience and uh, all the participants. Uh, we will edit a quick uh, recording 
to enable the participants and the registrants who won't have been able to participate to this webinar to have the recording of uh, this webinar. And we are expecting you uh, next week for the two days workshop session. Thank you. Thank you very much and see you next week. Bye-bye.